Did you find the raccoon or what? I'm pretty sure that when I came out, there was a raccoon at the back door. And then Zeus chased it off. All right, buddy. Keeping us all safe from squirrels, raccoons, and maybe some bears. Anyhow, <clears throat> working on hay bags at the moment, as you can see. We got some, um, I'm going to talk real quickly. We get some new hay soon. Um, but uh, real fast, little talk here, bright and early. Uh, we've got some, some different, what is it? There's no mouse in here. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, so we've got some, some different hay than we had before. From two different places. Real literally. Actually two different companies because the original company that we had bringing hay here has uh, gone out of business or something. So uh, we had to call it another one. Which is bringing in stuff from, I think it's Alberta. Or no, Washington. We used to get our stuff from Alberta. So a totally different country even. And, let's see here. So our old stuff, here. Oh yeah, quick tip for you guys, when you're cutting off your, your, your hay bale twine, is, um, just take it off immediately, don't, don't leave it in the hay bale. Double it up and then just make a big loop like this, tie it. Just a very simple, it, essentially it makes a big chunk, a big piece, something that you won't miss. You can't, not fine. If you've got a garbage can or something like that, sort of wait right away. If not, we just make a big pile on the counter and then, uh, actually, what? <laughs> this guy. What do you want? What are you doing? Is there a mouse in here? I don't think so. No. Anyhow, uh, the neighbor takes all of our twine and um, uses it for his uh, plants, for his garden. As if that's important right now. But let me. Okay, watch out, Zeus. You're going to get a load of hay on top of you. I told you. <laughs> a couple of flakes usually fall off the ends. No big deal. That's why this is the hay room. Okay, so these are three string bales, so they're bigger. Uh, it doesn't mean the hay is different. I'm just explaining they're three string bales, which means they're very heavy. Heavy, heavy bales. So two different types of hay here. I hope I can show it. Um, this stuff is a, uh, it's a Timothy mix, according to the seller. And uh, quite coarse. Well, not quite coarse. I mean, coarse meaning in that there's a lot of large pieces. It's not uh, not really small light pieces, um, but about really coarse. And then this stuff here is a, a mixture of Timothy, and it's a different cut as well. You can see there's a bunch of seeds in there, and there's stalks as well. More, more of the uh, the stalk of the grass. Might be hard to tell. Anyways, the point of that, really, is that they're two different hay types and quality and cut. Um, I believe. I believe this is first cut, not second cut. And from different years. Anyways, the point is that when you're switching up a hay for your horse, if you can, if it's possible, you want to make sure that you go for at least a few days where you're mixing both of them just in case you have sensitive horses. Not always. I mean, usually if you just switch out, they're probably going to be just fine. Um, but not always. So a uh, good practice or a best practice, you could call it, is to mix them up, put them a little bit half and half together, and then feed that out. So I was just working on that. Figured I'd talk to you guys real quick. <laughs> 